Hello YouTube, Reseller Mom here. Welcome to today's issue of the week. It is May 1st, Monday, 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 and it's been a very Monday, Monday. I got hit with re-verification on Friday, got that cleared up by Saturday, fighting with a company to give me an MSDS sheet. <laughs> they want me to go to my distributor. My distributor says go to the manufacturer. One of these, one of these, we get that a lot in Amazon. But today's issue of the week is what to do if something jump something. If somebody jumps on your private label item, and it's not my issue, which I have a lot of issues, but that one's not mine. I was helping a customer out on Fiverr. Both Tina and I, we offer Fiverr coaching. Links are usually down below. So if you are needing one-on-one -on -one help, feel free to hit up either of us down there. But uh, I helped this guy out and he was really excited. He got his item listed. It was an Alibaba purchase. He got the, we got the listing done. He got some sales, everything was going well. And then he messages me this morning and he says, my sales kind of stopped. Do you, do you know what's going on? And I said, well, shoot me the ASIN again. I usually keep those on file, but I hadn't. Anyhow, I looked at the ASIN. My first go-to is to check for indexing because that happens a lot. You get the category chains, you get unindexed, but it was indexed. So I pop in there and I look and I see there's now two sellers. And I look at the other seller, the other seller's display name is not his. And his, the address for the other seller is a Chinese address. At least I think it's Chinese characters. I'm not 100% sure when, when recognizing other languages there, but I'm 99% sure it is another Chinese seller drop shipping his item on his listing. So now he's sharing the sales with somebody else, which is totally not cool. When you do private label and you have things that you're getting and sourcing from Alibaba, there's a lot of issues that go along with sourcing from Alibaba. And one is you're private labeling an item, but if you don't do brand registration and other people jump on, there's not a whole lot you can do. So it's very irritating. Now, he messages me and he says, what are my options? What can I do? And I'm going to run them through run them through. I'm going to run through them with you, but it comes down to there's not a whole lot, but I'm going to give you, uh, give you some of the options. <laughs> he says I'm now connecting with Alibaba. All right, here's the first thing. When you're, when you're sourcing from Alibaba, some of those manufacturers, as soon as you give them your design plans, they're going to put it up on their website for sale. Uh, they now have your design plans. So whatever it is, you know, you create a little purse and it's got a cute character on it and they're making it for you. All of a sudden now they're selling it to their other people. That happens. Uh, that's something that you got to work out with the manufacturer. I don't think they're really, they're not inclined to really do what you say if they're not making a whole lot of money off of you. So, you know, if you only ordered, we'll say a hundred units and they're selling to now five people private labeling that item, and each of those private labelers are buying 500 units, what do they care if they lose your business, you know? So the manufacturer can rent you out or sell your product, and it could be the manufacturer selling it themselves. They, that's happened, that's happened. Uh, Alibaba is kind of one of those, you know, it's like buying from the street vendor. You kind of, you get what you get, and there's some naughty things that go on. Okay, next option, you can report them to Amazon. To do this, go to your account health, page in the top left corner is a report button. I hear weird noises going on in the back. You can report them. Uh, if you're not brand registered and you haven't done a purchase from them to verify that it's not authentic, you can go through the list. And the one that, that made sense in this section was my issue is not listed. Then it's going to ask for an order number and or a URL or a store name. You gotta pick the second one. I think it's ASIN or URL to the item you're complaining about and then write a description on what's going on. Unfortunately, they're gonna probably come back and say, well, are you brand registered? And if you're not brand registered, they give you the big, big middle birdie here. They don't really care. I have this going on with some of my private label items. Currently, I have other people that are on my listings, but because my trademark is not officially accepted by the USPTO, it's still in the pending status. I cannot issue out IP complaints. I can only use the report of violation and I did a test to buy and they did nothing. The other seller's still on there. They did absolutely nothing. Okay, those are the kind of the two nice ways. Now we're gonna get into some of the not so nice ways. And again, I am not telling you to necessarily do this. I'm just throwing out all the options to you. 
you could message them in Amazon and say, get off my listing. And we all know how most of us deal with that one. It's not, most of us just throw those in the garbage and say, uh, you know, get bent or not even respond. Some of us even report messages like that if we receive them because they're not legit. Usually when I receive them, they're not a legit thing, but when I issue them out, they would be legit. I, I don't go that way because really that doesn't, most people that are hijacking or playing naughty like this, they don't really care if you send them a nasty gram. Uh, you can go and put all of their items into your cart and see if, you know, if you try and hold up their items, if it takes them out for sale, let's say they have 20 in stock, you go add 20 to your cart. So then it shows that those 20 are, are being purchased. We've had people, I haven't done this or had this done to me, but we've had people that buy all 20. And then when they get them, they just return all of them. Now, unfortunately, the other seller had a thousand, so that'd be a really big bill. I, I, don't, I don't think he'd wanna do that. He wouldn't wanna purchase all these and then return them. But uh, you could purchase them and then wait for it to be in, no, even if it's in transit, because it's a drop shipper that, that jumped on his listing, a drop shipper from China that, you know, the, the fulfillment date is three, four weeks out. So, you know, it's a drop shipper from, yeah, it's, it's a naughty person. All right. So you could try and kibosh all their inventory. People have done that. They have literally bought all the items and or just returned them as is or actually destroyed them and then returned them, you know, made them unsellable. And uh, I, I I think that that's really naughty. I, I believe in karma, so I, I personally wouldn't do a lot of these things. I like to play nice because I truly believe that we need to do that in life, but that's my beliefs in my, my world. So take all of these other ones now coming up with a huge grain of salt. You could uh, try and track down this person, call them and, or get a lawyer and lawyer up and tell them that you're gonna sue the bejesus out of them if they don't knock it off. It's a legal way, but also kind of naughty. Uh, you could physically go show up at their place if you wanted to fly over to China and knock on the door. And sometimes we wanna go knock on some doors and, and get some violence out, right? I wouldn't necessarily recommend that either. Uh, you could go down the trademarking route get brand registered and file for a USPTO uh, trademark. Unfortunately, to get it through the whole verification process, it's I think six to eight, six to nine months. And during that time, you can't issue out an official IP. But if you're gonna keep selling on Amazon, it is a pathway that you're gonna wanna do. Then that way in the future, you can just issue IP complaints and nail them legally through Amazon's policies and get them off your listing. You could play naughty and take yours off for sale. It depends on your inventory and all of that, but say you only have a couple in stock, maybe uh, price hike that up so yours go into stranded and then destroy the listing. I've had to do this with people. Uh, it's not, again, not something that I really like doing, but they've kind of, kind of come on and hijacked my, my listing. You go in and you, uh, put in the worst photo possible, you take out all the keywords, you put in wrong keywords, I don't know, you can destroy a listing many different ways. Do not ever delete the listing, otherwise you lose ownership if there's other people on it. So if you join our bundle groups, you learn all these ins and outs and whatnot. So come join us over there if you wanna get into the, the real nitty gritty on the back end of Amazon and all of that. What else could you do? I think I've gone over everything. He was, oh, last thing, you could have a friend or family member not related to you. Make sure names, addresses, and all of that does not have any linkage to your Amazon account. So if you've shipped your friend, like I've shipped Marcy stuff, so I couldn't call up Marcy and be like, hey, could you buy this item for me? And then report it because you just don't want it to come back on your end. But maybe somebody at work or somebody that you're not you're not linked up with very much, have them buy it and have them report it. Because if they get the item and they report it as inauthentic or report something, then it could give them a ding on their account health dashboard that they'll get shut down over. Uh, the naughtiest ones to do is to say that it's fake. Um, if you use a product review and or seller review, you write something in there that I received this item and it is a fake item or it caused a rash or it's expired 
I'm trying to think what's the worst, worst one. Probably inauthentic is, is the worst. And those are, that's really playing dirty. <laughs> uh, but it is inauthentic in a sense because it's not the, it's not his listing. It's not his product. So there's some, some options there. Of course, when we get these types of situations, we all want to just scream and yell and punch some punching bags, but take a deep breath, see what your legal options are. Try playing nice first and you can always relist your item. Problem is, is if they get on your listing and they start getting negative reviews because they're selling the wrong thing or it's a cheaper product or whatever, you're going to have to, you're going to start getting bad reviews. And that's what happened with the one that, that I had somebody selling on is they were not practicing good. They weren't a good seller and they were getting a lot of bad reviews and negative reviews and selling stuff that wasn't good. So I had to walk away from that listing, make a new listing get that listing ranked up and then go through and see what I could push through. I pushed through bad pictures. I pushed through uh, bad bullet points. You know, you can change the bullet points to what you want. You can put in different keywords so that it doesn't rank very well, etc. And and try to get that person gone. But it comes down to there's not a, not a whole lot you can do. And unfortunately, there's no Wild West sheriff in town that can go after and, and get them off for you. So you got to kind of think of all your options, see what works for you, what, how much inventory you have, how big the fight is. You know, obviously if you get a lawyer involved, that's very expensive. I always go through Casey Hewitt, who I plug all the, I plug her all the time because she's my go-to person. If I do need a lawyer, which I haven't, I'm going to knock on some wood, but her link is down below, or you can just Google Hewitt Law. I get no affiliate or anything from her. I have no kickbacks. She's just done really good work for me. So depending on how badly you want to go after them and how much it's worth, you can contact her, but uh, you're going to spend a couple hundred dollars. She's not super duper expensive. We're not talking thousands of dollars. And there's not a whole lot she can do either. She can email them a lovely legally letter to get off and probably scare them. She scares me. So she could probably scare them off much more than you can. You can try going to small claims courts, but if it's a dropshipper in China, that's not going to do you any good either. So yeah, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I am trying to give you all of the options out there. And that's all I can think of right now. <laughs> that's that's not getting into really, I mean, there's karma stuff and then there's like below karma. You, I'm not even going to get into that, but I, you guys have probably watched enough TV. You can guess what I'm thinking. All right. Take care. Have a great day.